You're listening to the Comic Crusaders Podcast. I am your host, Al Mega, CEO of Comic Crusaders and Undercover Capes. In this show, I'm sitting down with creators from all walks of life to talk about inspiration, process, the lessons they've learned, and a whole lot more. Wepa! What up, mi gente? What it is? This is your boy, Al Mega. Welcome to a brand new Comic Crusaders podcast, and today we're talking to a legend, at least to me. I mean, homie been in the game for a minute. He's a legendary blogger with a website called Comics Grinder. He's a cartoonist. He's an artist. He's an author with a fire book right now that he spoke, you know, he's kind of inspired by a legend. We, I can't wait to get into the story because I'm a big fan of the stuff that this man, that man worked on. This is going to be fire. Let me introduce this man right here, the one, the only, the mighty, Henry Chamberlain. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> very cool. I, I, I'm very impressed. I'm honored to be here. Yeah, well, well, I'm, I'm great. I'm honored. Thank you for coming <laughs> through. We, we're going to talk fire about your books, so off those dope websites where people could get this amazing book. You know, so thank you. You know, right before this long weekend, we're about to bust it out and have some good fun. Uh, so let's get into it because this is called the Comic Crusades podcast. You know, and, and, and every hero has their origin. So, Henry, talk about yours a bit. Let me know where you were originally from and the first thing that was your, your fandom love, your first oh. love. Oh, you know, I was thinking about this a while back and uh, it's very obscure. It, it was just a cat and a mouse. I remember as a little, little kid, my first drawings were a cat and a mouse. And I was saying, where were they, where did they come from? And it, it, the mouse had a really pointed nose and his crazy cat. Okay. And I, that's, that's a very old comic strip. But yeah, I don't know what it was. Maybe because they, they did some animated version of it on TV. So I think I was okay. picking up on that. This is in the, in the 60s. Right. And uh, I've always loved to draw it. That's, that's been my way to cope and my way to, I figured out, well, how, how am I going to enjoy life as I get older and through drawing, through art, anything creative. I, that's That was my game plan to keep myself alive and keep myself young. Okay. I, so, I think, I think I'm onto something. Wepa, here we go. But, but based on what you just said though, and the era, you know, was it encouraged to, to, to do that then? Was it something, was it frowned upon or encouraged at least in your household growing up that artistic? side of yours that creative side well both of my parents were creative so yeah okay. It, it, okay. It, it, <laughs> well well my mom it was more a natural thing it, it's intuitive thing where she liked to paint and she she didn't have any she didn't talk about influences or anything like that and my dad he he uh he was kind of self-taught in, in his creative writing and uh so so they, they both kind of marched to the to uh their own drummer, the okay. beat, beat of their own drummer. And, and I, I picked up on that and then said, wait, no, no, that, don't do that. You, you, you might not ever make any money doing that. So they were a little concerned, but at, at the, at the end of the day, they, they, um, yeah, they, they were willing to, to support me because it, it, it's always scary if somebody, if a little kid says, I'm going to be an artist when I grow up. Oh, okay. Well, that's interesting. And, but, um, but, you know, if you're determined and you just can't see any other way, you're going to do it no matter what. If, especially if they tell you not to, then you're really going to do it. Oh, of course. That's the last thing. <laughs> I would tell your kids not to. They say, sure, let them bust their ass. And then they learn their own lesson. Unfortunately, we learn by hits. All right. So while you're being creative, you know, and growing up, you know, um, did you have a, a, a tribe of kids that you grew up with that were also down with you, you know, outside of your parents, of course, I mean, that were creative, you know, down with, with, with the culture or were you a lone wolf? Well, you know, both my parents were kind of lone wolves. <laughs> my, my... Well, you guys were your own pack. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I gotcha. Yeah, I, I think you can understand. Uh, and I came from a mixed race uh, background, so it, it gave me this perspective, that's a unique perspective. That's like my... Uh, my secret uh, secret power, because you see things differently when you come from two backgrounds, very distinct. My dad's Anglo, my mom was from Mexico, and they, they were very lone wolf type people. So I was getting, and uh, and I branched out on my own, and my mom said, what, what are you doing? And she she, she uh, took issue with whenever I, I seemed too Anglo to her. Okay. Whatever, <laughs> whatever that... <laughs> 
I can't help it, Mom. The, the kids are talking a certain way. I'm, 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 and she said, "No, you're." you're because we grew up here. I guess she grew up in yeah. Mexico, correct? Yeah, yeah. All right. So you, you, you're the Americanized kid. <laughs> yeah. I was the first Americanized one in my family. Yeah. I, out of all my mother's side, I was the first American. Because even though I was born in PR, we merely came here, and I was raised here. So I was like okay. raised outside of PR. So it's like, you know, they showed me a lot of love before. I was like, holy crap, you know, you're the first one. How is it? How was it? <laughs> Not fun. I wish I could have been, you know, climbing trees, getting getting my own mangoes and, and, and eating up the bushes. You know what I mean? Come on. Well, that's the thing, because uh, I I never felt like I was completely in my own space. Hey, this this is my neighborhood. This is yeah. these are. I, I go back for the, my friends and everything goes back a certain time. And it, it, you can get it where it's too idealized. You, you, can, you can never get things perfect. Of course. Because that's, that's life. Yes, life is not perfect. So talk about then you taking those serious steps in, in your creativity to, you know, go pro. When was that? Well, what era was this? And what made you finally take that jump, that snap? Well, I think because I, I was really determined to go to, to college and pursue what I wanted to pursue. And uh, my, my dad kind of, he kind of did everything he could to to dis discourage me or, mm, or, or to, really? I, I was not being fed the right information. So I had to find out on my own and I had to work my way through college. Uh, it was, I was very determined to do what I wanted to do. And uh, there weren't any courses to teach me the things I wanted to, to know. And I didn't know exactly where I wanted it to go. I knew I wanted to write. I knew I wanted to paint. And uh, so people, uh, the Gen X uh, demographic uh, understands that older people understand mm -hmm. it. There were no comics courses. There was no easy way oh, to yeah. learn. I to know. I see it. My brother, but I see it. You know, uh, you know I'm, I'm, I was born in the 70s, mid-70s, and... You know, growing up, and I didn't, I didn't see that when I was of, of interest in schools. I mean, what, what you have, what, what's that? Uh, the, the Joe Cuba school was about the only thing that yeah. you knew existed. Other than that, uh, there was nothing in Manhattan. They, they weren't doing those comic courses that they do now. I'm like, yeah. what? When they told me all this, I'm like, what? I mean, my life probably would have been crazy different had I had access to that then. Maybe so. Maybe so. Yeah, I, I could kind of sniff out the Joe Cooper. That's going to be so corporate. It's going to be some, the Marvel way. I, I don't know that yeah. I necessarily want to draw that way. Yeah. So I, I didn't take it seriously, but and I, I knew that that wasn't going to be enough. I kind of felt like I, I had to decide on one thing, put my energy and my my money into it, and, and that was it. Because I, I didn't know I'd, yeah. I'd have I'd have the motive, the <laughs> momentum to do Plan B, C, and D. So I had to like I decided I I love. The, uh, the culture, everything going on at the University of Houston, where I ended up. Yeah. And so I, I stuck it out. And oh, there's a lot of, I mean, if, if you can't decide and figure it out, just go to college. Just go and figure it out as you go. And uh, if you're determined, you'll, you'll stick it out. You'll figure out, <laughs> you'll figure yeah. out how, how to do it. But then there's some, uh, life uh, progresses. And it wasn't until later that I really got into comics. Uh, okay. and, and that was in the 90s. And uh, I have to admit, I, I can't lie. It, it was once uh, I partnered up with my partner Jennifer Daydreamer. That's her. Uh, that's her uh, pen name. Uh, it opened up a lot more of the comics world because that, that's because she had her tribe, and she shared that with me. And, and so I, 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 I quickly started to pick up on things. Oh. So that's how this is done. That's how that is done. Oh, oh, this goes back to something that I learned, because I, I pick up things. I I, I was in, based in Houston back in the eighties, nineties, and every now and then I go to New York. I I pick up a few things. Oh, Art Spiegel, what's this all about? Or uh, <laughs> Love and Rock, Love and Rockets. Oh wow. Yeah. Or Yummy Fur. And then I made one trip to to uh, Paris and London. I, I learned about uh, European artists. Oh, Blutch, what's this about? And they I, got I put beautiful books out there, though. Oh my God! So I and I so I took all the things that I that I'd been stumbling across and learning on my own, and it it it, it I was into hyperdrive with, with Jennifer and and her her crew because she was part of the cartoonist uh, community in the in the early '90s, and uh, all all the a lot of the 
cartoonists that are now, we like to use the word legend now and then, like James Sturm or uh, uh, Craig Thompson, uh, 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 Ed Brubaker, uh, 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 Tom Hart, uh, Megan Kelso, the list goes on. Th that, was a, that was a mighty crew of cartoonists. And it, there's yeah, a lot of them, yeah. most of them, if not all of them, are still active. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and it was around that time. It's interesting, you, you did pick up when you, you say legend, I say, Why, am I a legend? But I, I've done so much comics journalism, so I, I guess I'm known for that. Yeah, yeah well, of course. I, you, you're working, brother. You've been out there, you know, one of the early <laughs> ones, you know? Shit. So, yeah. you know? And, and what made you even take that jump, I mean, to decide to do that? Did you not see it around, or, or, or was it just you wanting to share your opinion out there when the opportunity well, came? Well, you're right. It, it was uh, it was kind of the gold rush days, yeah. early, uh, the early aughts, when uh, alternative comics had become the, the new uh, darling in the media mm -hmm. and, and uh, people were re re rediscovering comics. Oh, it's not for kids anymore. Yeah, we know that, but yeah, the, the media was a, you. <laughs> <laughs> it was a drumbeat and it, uh, all of these uh, alternative comics uh, cartoonists are being elevated. And uh, I, I think it was like a, like a stock. They were thinking, Oh, this stock is going to, it's going to go to the moon. Yeah. yeah these, car right. these cartoonists are going to make all these, uh, they're gonna make billions. <laughs> they're gonna make. They're gonna make money with their books, and again, make money with their movies. They're the and, future of the entertainment industry, Papa. I mean, some are, you know, and some just oh, yeah. and you know, but again, that's that's the game, right? <laughs> but but there, there were only a certain number of people that were writing about this, and I stumbled upon yeah. the, the the poop sheet, the poop sheet the foundation. Poop sheet? What the heck that, is that? Wait, you're putting me on the poop sheet. <laughs> What's that? Well, I, it's Rick Bradford's uh, poop sheet where okay. he would talk about mini comics okay. and uh, all the comics that are way under the radar. Like nobody knew about these comics. So but, really uh, indie, not even indie, <laughs> underground. All Beyond right. indie, yeah. <laughs> what was the underground in, in the early aughts? And uh, cool. s some writers uh, uh, came out of that group. Uh, Rob Claus, the, the, probably the most notable of uh, the writers that came out of poop sheet. I came out of poop sheet and so did Rob Claw. Hey, Mr. Uh, you came out to shoot, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, Tom Spurgeon was one of the, the great, great uh, supporters of, of the indie comic scene and, and comics in general. And uh, so a lot of uh, people, younger people today who are, are trying to, to emulate uh, this uh, writing, seriously writing about comics will say, well, yeah. I, I want to be like Tom Spurgeon. If, if they even know that, but uh, some do, some, there's still, it's still a, a small number that do it the way I do it. <laughs> oh yeah. And, uh, Listen, yeah. What you do and the others that do on a more journalistic, more in depth. I mean, we need that more. I'm trying to, you know, get into that flow. I'm just going through my little journey right now, but I also want to have conversations, get, you know, a little bit more and put out there, you know, get, get more in depth on things and creative, you know, content because we have to. Now, I can't just be, you know, you know, sharing news, but uh, let, let's put people on be, be, besides the podcast that I do. You know, this kind of what's been inspiring that idea, but just about having the time. Because, again, being busy, yeah. <laughs> as you know, oh, yeah. creative is day jobs, you know, because sometimes the creativeness may not pay all the bills. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. Well, I was thinking, what could I tell Al about uh, my uh, comics career or uh, what do you do to make ends meet? And you, you do whatever you need to do. Yeah. Uh, I did a lot of office jobs because I, well, because it, it, there's longevity in that. You have to find your zone. You can zone into a particular type of office type of work. Yeah, man. You're, you're, you're gold. Nobody uh, but a touch of staple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, and then I, I, lately I've been thinking, you know, if I need to go, um, grab some extra cash being an uber driver is not exactly that bad because i yeah. i respect the uber drivers I, i've been i've been without wheels for a while now and so every now and then oh god i i don't know if i want to take the bus because the, the the it used to be no problem i'll take the bus and then for a while it was uh 
the bus is becoming scary. I, I, I hate the bus. I, I, I personally, I despise. <laughs> I mean, I grew in up the, in New York. Like the bus, I, 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 there's not a train I'm walking. I, I despise it because it's, yeah. I mean, but I grew up in the 90s. So even back then, it's like, yo, bullshit would happen on a bus just like a train. And then you're like, oh, my God, why? <laughs> why? I get you. But I mean, yeah, now, yeah, no public transportation is safe nowadays, really. Well, yeah, it, it, that's a that, that's a loaded oh, a, 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 a loaded <laughs> comment, uh, and it depends on where you live. But uh, oh, New York for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I still love New York, even if if it was. I love my food over there, and, and of course I got my family there. But I go over there, and let me get a real bacon, egg, and cheese on a real roll. To, you know, I'm in Massachusetts now. When I ask for a roll, they give me bread, like a bunky <laughs> thing. I'm like, this is not a roll. What like, I'm talking about? What are you talking? And you know we are. Oh. I've argued with them. I've almost been kicked out of stores because I'm like, this is not a row. <laughs> so no, I, I believe you. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Well, I'm all about atmosphere. I, I love uh, egg creams. I know if if you're an egg, oh, egg cream fan. Oh, I haven't had one in a minute, but yeah, man. That's not something you have too often, but for, for me. But when you have it, it's like yeah, some shit. You. Oof. <laughs> Oh, well, God. yo, you're it's... making me crave one because this is a spot by my office. Oh my God! Don't don't, don't play with me, Henry. <laughs> there, there's far more tastier items I could bring up, but the egg cream, it's like a, for a novelist or a cartoonist, it, it, it's like a character. You, you bring an egg, an egg cream. It's like just it. It's an interesting thing, the history yeah. behind it, and it can be done it really well. The ones I, I've the times I've gone to New York lately, I've ordered egg creams. And they're not necessarily the best version of the egg cream that I want, but it's, hey, it's still an egg cream. I'll take it. All right, yeah, egg cream and egg cream. So <laughs> let's start. I want to get into the book now. Let, let's start doing this over here because yeah, uh, yeah. apparently you've had a very fascinating encounter in your life with Mr. George Clayton Johnson. Yes, yes. Right? And, and at a memorial in 2012, you were inspired to create a graphic novel, from what I understand, called George's Run. So, you know, tell me about this little bit of intriguing journey of yours, uh, uh, of, uh, of meeting George and, and, and that inspiration to create this awesome, wild, fun book. <laughs> well, I'm really digging this way you've uh, created a, a nice environment. It's, I feel like I'm in a safe environment to, to just oh, for sure. spill, We're gonna spill, talk, you know? spill my guts. <laughs> because we we're kind of flowing into it because you asked me what, what are you, things that motivated you and I I, I laid down the, the the train tracks I said well it's gone in phases like uh as a little kid I I, I couldn't help drawing and then I met my uh, my partner in life for Jennifer and, and and she opened doors for me and then this guy George I feel like uh, I feel like George is like a, a new phase in my life. Where now I'm going to be able to uh, to be in an even better place to pursue what I love because I, I I love comics journalism and I love comics. How how do you combine the two? Well, if you do a work that's that's a comic and it's comics journalism, that's your solution. And uh, this book, I George, I could I could just feel it in my bones when I when I heard him speak in person. He was doing a tribute to Richard Alf. Who was one of the founders of Comic Con, and just he's a he's a thin little figure, but with a booming voice. He, he he's a, he is a legend. Okay. Uh, and uh, so I and to hearing the introduction they gave to him, all the TV shows he'd been on. Basically, he done he got in his hand in every show that was on on TV. He made a beeline to Hollywood. He, a man out of poverty from Wyoming. Uh, hitchhiked around, uh, left school at, at eighth grade, so wow. he had just he just had eighth grade education, but he was a voracious reader. So he he was a highly intelligent, highly educated, self taught man. <laughs> there's a, there's a self made man if, if ever there was yeah. one, and he went into the army for a while. He met his uh, uh, soulmate and went to Hollywood, knocked on doors looking for Ray Bradbury because he'd heard Ray Ray Bradbury's the guy who. Uh, who has a secret sauce? He's the guy who who's mentoring other cards. Uh, the adult. other writers. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, it's a little bit lost to history. I don't know if if George met 
his writing buddy, uh, Charles Beaumont, or if he went over to Ray Bradbury and Ray Bradbury introduced him to Charles Beaumont. But it's Charles Beaumont, who's around the same age as George, and between the two of them and a few other people, they had this little core group. It was uh, one writer who's been kind of lost to history, John Tomerlin uh, and uh, uh, George, Charles Beaumont, and uh, I'm losing my train of thought. I can't remember the, the, the fourth guy. There's four, four guys you'd have to help me find them. But anyway, it was, it was a big, loose group, and it was a small core group. And, uh, and it's just the story's fascinating because it, 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 I, I kept asking the same question over and over at different times over the phone. And then I finally got to meet him in person, ask him questions in person. And we, uh, we agreed to meet again. And then there was never, never a chance to meet again because he was in hospice the next year. But uh, I, I already had all the information I needed. He's basic. It was like out of a movie. Like I think of, a, I, I think of the, a John Wayne movie with uh, Ron Howard, the shootist. Okay. And it, it, <laughs> the Duke is dying and he kind of gives the tip of the hat and he, yeah, yeah. he keels over and, and Ron's left to tell the story that when, uh, when the, when the legend is the story to tell, tell, I, I forget what it is exactly. Um, when the truth isn't quite right to print the legend, but in, in George's case, the truth is is as good as the legend. So George had said, you can uh, use creative license. And I only did that in, in some scenes to uh, recreate moments, but everything he said is from the horse's mouth. So this oh, is just, really? a it's just a gold mine yeah. of uh, a, a window into the creative process, a window into uh, things that are, are so significant in, in culture and pop culture the Twilight Zone. It's it's been said many times that it's it's considered the best television show ever made. Oh heck yeah, I would agree with that a hundred. That the, the old school, the Rod Serling, absolutely. I mean, I I like the 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 eighties and this, and it was okay. But the OGs for me, bottom line, cannot be defeated. <laughs> so just think of it. Uh, George will never fade away because he is a part of the Twilight Zone. So his his legacy is is secure. Yeah. Yeah, man. Wow. I mean, look at the inside of this book. So this is all you, 100% art and, 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 and words and all? Yeah, yeah it's all me. I, 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 drew, oh. I researched it. I wrote it. I drew it. Every bit of it. I colored it. Wow. wow. Wonderful. How long was the project you sit in down when, when you decided to do so to from beginning to end, you know, the process? Well, yeah, because when I'm interviewed, I, I always cite when I first got the idea of hearing George speak in 2012. So I interviewed him on my podcast, and then I saw him in person 2014. And then the intervening years, I was out uh, sweating bullets. Oh, how do I get this together? <laughs> but it it wasn't uh, rushed because I, I was okay. doing my I was doing my day job, and I'd come home and I'd work on my do do a little bit of work. Okay, I've done enough for today. I come back. I did. A, I created a Bible of of the book, where, oh, so yeah. a, a Bible is essential for cartoonists because it's basically you, you're collecting everything you've done. You've got it in some binder, and then you're free to reshuffle the pages. Whatever, how, however many times you have to reshuffle them, redraw them, whatever. But you, you need a, a a roadmap. If you're going to do a, a really good graphic novel, you need some kind of roadmap. You need some sort of system. Even if you love doing post-its and writing little notes in one notebook that you lose and then you, you write it in another notebook. Or even a murder board, right? Because you're about to murder that book. Like, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> you, you need a, at, at some point, you need to gather up all your scraps of paper, paste them into a, a scrapbook, basically, or, or a Bible, and, okay. and start to organize your thoughts and, and write out a script, maybe. Maybe that's what you have to do. But, but everybody has their own way. Um, but some things I think are tried and true. I think it's good to have some kind of a prototype of the book that you can work off of because it's going to go through many iterations as, as it evolves over time. And this, so this, this took years to make. Uh, and then around 20, well, I, I guess that during the pandemic where everybody had At this, <laughs> everybody, everybody entered the twilight zone, basically. We, we all had this eerie time of this pause where you could really, you could do anything you, oh, yeah. I, I, for people. 
who were fortunate enough to be healthy, of course, because some so many people were not. But for those that managed to have the ability, the time, the ability to focus, it was it was an opportunity. And uh, so it was during that time that I buckled down and said, you know, I'm going to get a publisher. <laughs> I, I I think I need a publisher for this. I could self publish it and then promote it on my own, all that stuff. But no, no, let's see. Let's let's try a self-publisher. And uh, luckily for me, uh, Rutgers University said, you know, I like I like the cut of your jib. I like what you're doing. So uh, awesome. so uh, Nicole Solano, the director, she uh, she said this this works for us. This works for our media studies. And uh, so yeah, let's do it. Uh, I took a page out of uh, Megan Kelso's playbook. She had said. You know, a lot of these uh, agents, publishers, they really, they can't quite envision your vision. So, you know what you should do? You should do the whole thing. Just complete the graphic novel and then show it to them. And that no one can question, no one can say, I don't get it. Here it is. It's done. And it's done. <laughs> and if it's done correctly, uh, that might, you, your, most of your work might be done right there. Of course, there'll, there'll be little tweaks tweaks along the way, but yeah, if, if you if you can be patient enough, if you love what you're doing, you you'll see. Yeah, you, there'll be people listening to this and go, yeah, you know, that's what I should do. I, I should just stop talking about it, just walk walk the walk, talk the talk, and 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 do it. Get it done. Get it done. Get, that's it. Get it done. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. all you got to do. I mean, homie did it. Look at this wonderful book. I mean, and, and I got to go back here because it kind of made me laugh. So I, you know drawing there's a wee leaf there yeah yeah and, and that's mentioned kind of in the synopsis too did they was there a lot of heavy use of this back then i mean you had to be in a twilight zone i guess right <laughs> well, uh, yeah uh, that is an interesting topic all to itself and as uh, some people choose not to bring it up so it's good that you bring it up uh when i was talking to george in person and i i, I feel like i'm talking to a father figure or to a godlike figure when he says something, I listen, and I, yeah. I, it was interesting. Anything he said, I went back home and I did it. He said, "You should read." Uh, uh, I don't have to look it up. I, I, my, I'm having a, a brain moment. What? Um, well, if he told you to smoke, it's understandable. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. All, all, all it's. Um, no, I, it'll take me a second. Theodore Sturgeon's More Than Human, More Than Human, for goodness sake. He said, have you read More Than Human? And I said, uh, no, I felt like a professor is asking you, did you do your homework? <laughs> so I went I went home and read, and it blew my mind because it's so, uh, it's such a smooth read for one thing. The characters are so uh, whimsical, magical. The story is is so inspiring. Basically, the, the, the story, is, I wouldn't say message, but the story is about how every human matters, every human, no matter from the low, lowest to the low to the highest to the high. And uh, the characters in More Than Human are three misfits who are damaged uh, souls who are strong when they're together. So that, that's 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 the, the premise, mm -hmm. basically, with a lot of other supernatural things going on. But uh, so I said, oh, my God, that, you know, that it that I would say that is the gold standard. And he said it, he basically said that because he pointed, said that is he was emphasizing, you know, the older people, they just get to they cut to the chase. That's it. More than human and a story, because in public, he'd always say, I love Ray Bradbury. I owe a lot to Ray Bradbury. Ray Bradbury's stories are amazing. And there's a lot of truth to that. But in his heart, he knew. The secret sauce is Theodore Sturgeon. And I think it's just a matter of time before he's re-rediscovered and maybe there's going to be a major motion picture or something that'll get the, it'll get the general public uh, behind. You know, like Oppenheimer, it just takes a one movie, all yeah. of a sudden it's on everybody's radar. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, uh, well, you know what? We, you know what? The Hollywood, after the strike, is just waiting for Mr. Chamberlain to write that story. You know, let's make oh, it happen. Let's manifest, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're right. You're right. Well, I think it, it would make a wonderful screenplay. Uh, so I think so. This would, I, I want to see this. This is like a hell of a story to, to, to be able to see. I mean, your book, right? George is run right here, too? I need to see this. I mean, uh, on screen one day. It, it, it must be fun. So I got to ask you here, right? 
Yeah, yeah. Um, if George, right, based on what you're telling me, if George were a comic book character, what would his catchphrase be? Uh, <laughs> better, better luck ne next time, Mister Death, because he was always he was death-defying antics, finding ways to to trick death, to uh, really? out, <laughs> out outwit death, and. In reality, he did uh, have his way with death because he didn't die just any old day. He died on Christmas Day, oh, which is incredibly significant because uh, Rod Serling was born on Christmas Day. Oh, and, damn. And George, it's just like, like like he willed it. I, he was at hospice, and he, he died on Christmas Day. Oh. That just it, That's eerie. He goes, I'm going to go say happy birthday to Rod. Yeah. That is insane. That's insane. So let me ask you here then. So um what was it? What was okay? What was the most unexpected thing that you learned from George that influenced you in your comics work? Well, that the uh the power of actually being in the same room with somebody, like uh, I, I was in the room when it happened. You hear that in Hamilton. That's not that that's the, the most powerful statement for me in hamilton i was in a room when it happened it's 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 really i don't know if you've seen it's on disney so everyone can see it now but mm -hmm. i don't i don't know whether it, it was an interesting thing they did by charging so much to see it at the when they first came out but to be in the room to be in a room with uh with george was incredibly powerful to me and he had a little piece of paper in his hand and it was the four episodes that uh, he that prominent four episodes he did on the Twilight Zone, and there there it was, and he, and he said everything's there, Henry. Wow, you, 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 don't, you don't get that in in a Zoom Jeez. necessarily. Wow, wow! Did you smell the ink? I'm like, wow. <laughs> yeah. you know, ink? Oh man, that, that, that's fire. So let me ask you: Did Henry drop any hints, you know, about hidden Easter eggs, if you will? I mean, George, you know, uh, drop any Easter eggs in his own life that readers should be looking out for in George's run? Oh, my goodness. Um, well, I, I, I want to get back a little bit to, to, to cannabis because he said, Henry, you got to make sure that you uh, tell the story of cannabis correctly. Cannabis so that, correctly. Where yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he said, well, you know, uh, J Jack Hare, he, he was a, a friend of mine. He... I he and I, we, we worked hard uh, to uh, so, as activists for marijuana when it okay. it was when it, when it was called marijuana when it was is oh, it, it was well, treated what, more. I gotta ask. Wait, wait. So when George mentioned this to you, were you a cannabis friendly person at the time? That's interesting that you should say that because <laughs> I, I I felt my cannabis moments already passed me. Like uh, you know, you yeah. do that when you're young. You can't help when you're young. You go to parties. Even people who do not do cannabis will do cannabis or, or smoke joints at a party. And oh, that's all past me. But the, the timing was so perfect because when George said, "I'm, I'm pro cannabis," <laughs> and, and he wasn't implying, "Are you Henry?" But I, I thought, yeah. oh, I, don't, what, I wonder, am I, am I pro cannabis? And then should I try was, this thing? <laughs> <laughs> But at the timing was so crazy because in Seattle, that's when uh, cannabis had just been legalized and all the cannabis shops were just opening up. Pop, 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 pop. Oh, the timing, geez, bro. And, and so it was so easy to, to go in and-, and You had cannabis bodegas as soon as he yeah. said that. He willed yeah. cannabis bodegas. That's, yeah. not, that's how powerful George was. He willed cannabis bodegas for Henry to make sure that the <laughs> book was gonna get done. So, so yeah, I- Wow. I, I well, the serious part is I thought, okay, I have to do justice to, it can't be a joke whenever I'm, I'm on a podcast or a panel discussion and just say, oh, well, you know, oh, that, that must be the marijuana speaking. Ha, 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 ha. No, so I, I have to be serious and say, yes, well, there is a place for it. Of course, it can be abused. I've thought about this a lot. Like, yeah. Well, you know, that's the same for alcohol. If you gave me two bottles of wine, I drink all the wine, I'm not going to be in a good place. Yeah. So you have to do it responsibly, and that's that's the that's the one thing about the Seattle uh, cannabis uh, culture that that's been evolving. At, at, and the shops are the shops. Oh my goodness, they can be very very erudite uh, and uh, 
very polite and very uh, very very professional uh, about the whole thing, which of course that's that's what we want. Uh, so they're 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 laying down the groundwork for what'll happen nationwide over time. Uh, yeah, so it just uh, it, enjoy that for what it is. Treat it like you're drinking a fine glass of wine. That's that's the thinking. Okay. And you, so, so anyway. Based on his comment, did you feel that that, that was correct then? Were you able to get into a, a, a nice creative headspace, for example? Uh, <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I, it's okay. the same with, with wine. Like, I, okay. It's not going to really work for me if I have a bottle of wine or That's a glass really of good. wine while I'm writing. Yeah. It's like it's two different things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I feel like I have to enjoy one. They have to separate them. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right, so um, were there any moments during your research and in speaking uh, with George that made you think that this is so bizarre, this can't be something that happened in real life, this must have happened in a comic book? Yes. <laughs> he goes, the, yes. That's what led me to, to do the graphic novel because he had so, had so many lucky breaks for him to uh, to stumble upon this uh, heist story, a heist uh, story. Yeah, well, he and his buddy were, were uh, watching as a grocery store was uh, closing up a piggly wiggly or something, and yeah. there was the, the, the old fashioned store safe. And his friend Jack said, "You know, it'd be so easy to just rob that bank or that that grocery store. You just yeah. crack that safe open." <laughs> and George said, "You know, why not go where the real money is? And so let's go to you would go to Vegas." You, you would uh, rob casinos. What? And so that, <laughs> that is the ba that was the they wrote what was the basis for Ocean's Eleven. They, they wrote a they wrote a short story that was the screenplay that led to Ocean's Eleven. Yeah, they saw a story of them doing their bullshit. Say, hey, we can make a movie out of what we're doing. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting, and, and they knew Yo, they were wow, son. They knew they were on to something, and so uh, George got a lawyer, and they they wrote up a. a what they hope it would keep them safe, uh, their rights to the story, and they they uh, got some Hollywood people involved in it, and they said, okay, we'll we'll take it from there, boys, and so a team of writers created a, uh, uh, a, a showcase for Frank Sinatra and, and his Rat Pack buddies, which wasn't oh, wow. exact. It wasn't exactly the story. They it, 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 it took out anything technical and uh, uh, interesting about an actual bank heist, and they turned it more into like a glamour, funny story yeah. about these tough guys. Yeah. This, you know, we're, the Playboy, the, smooth, the Playboys, yeah, smooth, smooth criminals, if you will. But uh, but it still it still was it still went back to George. So George uh, hired on with Playboy as a freelance writer, and he went on set and he tracked was able to maneuver his way to Frank Sinatra and he, he pleaded his case and Frank said don't don't, don't worry kid I got gotcha. you what and but, but before he knew it he had the credit uh he had a credit in the movie and he and Jack were credited with a novelization of Ocean's Eleven so whoa and so that that was it Respect that's a, to Frank Sinatra for doing yeah. that for a creator son. I got gotcha, you I got gotcha, you kid I got gotcha, you kid don't you so, wish uh, oh, 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 all creative <laughs> talent was like that, you know? know. That. Jeez. Wow, so that shout was, out to George, bro. That was his calling card. So, and, and he went on to, uh, to to write for television. He, he focused wow. on television. And Alfred Hitchcock Presents. Oh, wow. He, he always I've been had watching a, some of those. And I was, yeah, like, yeah. You know, I was like, yo, these, I didn't catch on to because they weren't really shown too much in NY. I would see more of the, uh, you know, the, the Twilight Domes, the Tales from the Dark Sides and stuff like that. They yeah, yeah. That or the monster, you know, funny ones. But I, I, I'm happy I'm catching up to these. I mean, they're, they're pretty complex and deep. Some of these, I mean, huh? Uh, on that, uh, what's the other one? The the, the space one, the, the sci-fi one. Uh, well, there's there's outer limits. Outer limits, yeah. I mean, I like the newer rendition of that though. That was pretty wild. It, it kind of had a nice theme ongoing through the through the story. It was pretty fucking cool. <laughs> oh, are you talking about that one on Netflix? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or, or no, no, I'm thinking no, no, of something else. It was, it was, it was recent. The the last version. Of okay. It. I forget where it was, but the last version of it really had an underlying theme that kept going throughout the scene. And I love when they do that. Like, it, it, it's one and done, but it has a theme kind of. Oh shit! Things okay. all tie in. You know, 
you know, basically the Marvel method before the Marvel method. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to have to look that up because I, I don't think I – actually, I don't think I've seen that. There's so many things I yeah. mean to see and then I, I lose track. But It's just too much good stuff. Listen, now that there's a strike, we're not going to get no good stuff for a long time anyway. So, you know, retro TV all the way, baby. Let's get <laughs> up. I know. And Go ahead. I got I to ask, is that how you guys met? Was there butterflies and kitties all around? <laughs> well, I, I, I think so. <laughs> no, no, that's creative license for sure. No, act, actually, it's not because uh, in his backyard, he had a whole bunch of cats. It was like the island of cats. Oh, he, oh, he was he, a cat man then. He, he loved cats, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, and look at that beautiful book, which you can buy, folks. And, and let me even display a bigger few guys that can't see. You could pick this up. I, I, we, we would love you could pick up directly from the source, right? At Rutgers oh. University Press. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, but of course, there's other outlets, including Amazon, you know, but, you know, but go to the go go home first. Get those first prints, folks. You know what I mean? That's what we got to well, do. No, yeah. My, my heart uh, is with, with Rutgers University, and I, I hope to do other projects with them. And yeah, uh, right there. I, I just love them. So, yeah. yeah. Look, look at I, that right there, folks. 226 pages. 196 color, one black and white image, six by nine. I mean, this is so porn, folks. Beautiful cover. I mean, a nice thick book that you, you'll be thoroughly entertained with. I mean, look at this the rap pack of science fiction, colorful band, right? I mean, this is, a, this is the work <laughs> right now. You get paperback started at $24.95, and if you need them, them in cloth toys right there, $49.95. Oh, man. Oh. That's the hardcover coffee's in a month. You know what I mean? Come on. Well, the hardcover is definitely worth it, but uh, if, if you're on a little tight budget, there the paperbacks is is beautiful. I mean, I mean for two twenty six. I mean that's the deal. I mean, look at that. George is holding that. Look at. Let me see how thick that. Look at that. Look at the yeah. girls on that. For you. No, look at that. It, it, wow. it, it's it's definitely a, a you keep. See that set. spine. You can go to sleep with it if you want. Hey, that's but, a uh, hello, man. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> so. No, it, it's it's definitely something that uh, is going to appeal to people on many levels. So it would make a great gift, uh, a gift for you, you my friend. Yep. I'm getting you, this. Treat yourself to. Oh, I am right. treating myself to this, you know, because you did tell me, <laughs> oh, I wish you had it on hand. I said, yeah, don't do it. I got to get hit my Amazon, but I am definitely adding this to my porn stuff <laughs> because uh, this, this is what it is. Or rather, self porn, not my porn stuff. I said it backwards. Self porn. Oh, what is that? The pop culture sleuth. Where pop? What's popping there? Yeah, treat yourself to pop culture super sleuth as well. Yeah, I'm digging that. Look at this guy. So you pimping. see, <laughs> he's pimping his goods here, folks. Yeah. Awesome stuff. This is the way you do business. You know what I it's mean? It's a it's a continuation of, of what started with George's run because I, I insert myself into the narrative. So with pop culture super sleuth, I am the pop culture super sleuth. Hey, and uh, it's going to debut at Small Press Expo. In Bethesda, oh, cool. Maryland. When? Oh, that, when, when? When is that? That's uh, the weekend of the 9th and tenth. So it's it's coming oh, this up. This month. Hey, yeah. awesome! That, that's all right. Great, because that's kind of when, when, as we're about to. And I always love to know your appearances. So, uh, so that's the next one. Are you doing any others, or is that like your last one for the year? Well, this uh, is going to keep me busy because I'm going to continue uh, developing pop culture super suit. I okay. have at least uh, a dozen. Uh, potential projects, and I can narrow down to six. I can narrow down Ooh. to three, but uh, there's some that uh, oh, I, I, I don't know if I should say anything right now because I don't want to jinx it. But I, <laughs> I, I, I definitely have some ideas. To, I got uh, plenty to work with. The the Chamberlain verse is coming, folks. Don't you worry. You know, <laughs> it, it's only getting started. And not just that, it's been started. You know why? Because again, <laughs> look, you also got to visit this website right here. Oh yeah, All right. the legendary side, the comics grinder. I mean, check it out. I mean, great news, great information. He offers up everything: reviews, interviews, graphic recordings, essays on comics. You know I mean, because I've had team members give us some wonderful essays on, on comic history and on film. That you should check out in the column section. Awesome stuff. But yeah, this website right here, by by, by this legendary blogger that's been in the game for a minute. Again, he, he came into it when it was just. Starting still, you know, it was, it was a baby. So for you to still be, be rocking the site and doing what you're doing, bro, you know, a salute to you as a fellow, you know, uh, blogger, website guy. 
Thank you. You know, you're doing your thing, Henry. You continue to do your thing. I think you're an amazing, amazing uh, person with wonderful energy. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I thank you for sharing of yourself and putting yourself out there for, as a fan. To just thank you, Henry. For real, bro. You, thank you, Al. You're a solid dude. You rock, man. <laughs> thank but you I, so much. No, no, for real. And, folks, again, I've been showing this off, like, throughout the whole show. <laughs> Get your copy of George's one from the publisher. I'm going to state that again many other outlets but we want you to first go to rock desert and once they run out and you know it's no choice that you could go in and go go to amazon and them other joints but you know let's support you know home first you can obviously <laughs> follow the website that i just told you comicsgrinder.com but guess what you can follow him on instagram too at comics grinder all right so you know sort of love sort of love now henry in, in this wonderful journey you've been on for a minute and, and varied at that you know you know comics you know websites publishing you know doing your thing but getting it done interviewing all these amazing people what type of advice would you give to to, to youngins out there trying to come up and maybe navigate the, this world of comics like, like like you have well you always hear never give up uh the thing is your first efforts as what will be probably crappy or or, or awkward but that's just the way it goes. You just ha you have to go in there and draw, 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 and not think about it, not worry about it. Just if you if you know in your heart that you love something and you want to be like, let's say you want to be an actor, but you 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 stumble, you're, you're awkward at first. It takes practice, persistence, determination for anything, anything worthwhile. You've got to just give it your all, never give up, just stay determined. Absolutely. You hear it. From the model of this man has been in the game for a minute. It's spoken to legends. It's worked with legends. Got a fire book that you guys got to buy today. Again, the holidays are coming up too. You know, yes, it's that season. We are in that month, folks. We are diving into fall. So, you know, it's time for you to guys start building them Christmas lists. So for the nerds and geeks <laughs> in your life, that this is the book you gotta get George's run. Don't forget that name. Trust you me, it will be thoroughly enjoyed. Over 200 pages of content for $24.95. You can't even get a graphic novel that big for that price nowadays. So I think that's amazing. I, it's an amazingly fair deal of something that's totally original, supporting Indy, an amazing creator, and the story of an amazing legend. So Henry, once again, thank you for your time. Today. Oh, thank you. I want you to come back because I, I know you got more stories. So I definitely want you to come back. This is su casa now. All right. <laughs> and me, gente, thank you for tuning in. You know what it is. Follow me at the real app maker just about everywhere. At Comic Crusaders just about everywhere except YouTube, which is Comic Crusaders World. So, you know, when you go there, you're going to subscribe and turn on notifications. So, you know, when we're speaking to amazing people like Henry. All right. So, again, right. thank you for tuning in. Much thank love, you. me, gente. Y'all stay motivated. Have a safe weekend. Hasta la próxima, baby. Wee All right. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Comic Crusaders podcast. If you like the content, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, please visit ComicCrusaders.com and our extended podcast family over at UndercoverCapes.com. And also, make sure to download the Comic Crusaders app on the Google Play Store today. 